position. Okay. So Ryan Tov, everybody, we're back in the saddle with Eshbech Levon of Sihi. It's been a while since the last class. Let's just refresh everyone's memory. And uh, we're in the, we're starting on page Reish Chof. And we began um, chapter 19, praises of Hashem and thanksgiving to Hashem. And we talked about how even under difficult circumstances, one is obliged to give praises to Hashem. And, uh, and that's very significant as it, uh, it gives you a position of prayer to Hashem. You have to always start with praises. And even though things are difficult, in the difficult situations, there's much to praise Hashem for. And now he's going to tell us that not everybody's capable of doing this. It depends on your spiritual profile. So we begin on page Reish Chav. Moreno Rav Nasser Omer, Rabbi Nasser says, Sha'adam Shaina Isaac, but Toda, Hoda, a person who's not engaged in giving thanksgiving. Yocholim Chas Vishoma, Yisurim Shalola, Viro Al Daito, Al Das Kaunam. God forbid these sufferings can bring a person to go away from his, to lose his mind, so to speak, and to stay away from Hashem's knowledge. In other words, it will totally wreck the guy up. It will dull and make his heart crooked from Hashem. If you're not learning, if you're not engaged in thanking Hashem all the time. And what happens is if you're not used to this, it's not enough that the person won't pray and ask for mercy when a bad situation comes. God forbid his heart will turn away from Hashem. When a person um, goes after a flows from his sufferings, in other words, he gets caught by the sufferings, the sufferings go after him. In other words, what he's saying is a bad situation comes into your life. There's two ways of looking at it. You look at it either as this is the best thing Hashem can be doing for me, and I have to thank him for this. Of course, you have to deal with it, and it will cause me to do tshuva and all these things. But if a person is very far away from thanking Hashem, he just lets this make him miserable. And if anything, he feels more distant from Hashem, and the more distant you are from Hashem, the more suffering will come for, to you. So it's the exact opposite that you don't want to be doing. Odo will be a Rabbi Nassim also adds, Sheikr at sorry, what's the main sorrow? Is Keshemargi Shikfar Enlo Takon, if he feels there's no way out, there's no way to be saved from this. And when you figure, oh no, this is the end, it's going to be a terrible ending, then was a Sitra Akhreitz Arma Fato Salomer Shashem also. Then the forces of the opposite and the Yet Sahara seduce the person to convince the person that Hashem has left him. And when you feel that Hashem has left you, that's the worst place to be in because you're losing all the protection if you, indeed you do not feel this connection to Hashem. Now, that's one issue, but now he uh, puts this a little deeper, and this is a very similar idea to what the Chovah Savavah said. Could be sometimes when something that appears to be an act of God happens to a person, like sickness or something like that. Maybe then he's capable of accepting the truth that that everything Hashem does is for the good. That's possible. Here's where it gets much harder, though. What if people are giving him problems? What if people are chasing after him? He's not willing to accept that. Why? That it's from Hashem. Why? Because he's looking at the proximate cause. Now, if it's a sickness, it's easier to say that Hashem brings the sickness. But when it's a human being who has free will choice, it's much harder for Hashem to realize, for the person to realize that it's not the person, but it's Hashem. Why? Because the guy is saying, these guys are chasing after me against the will of Hashem because they're doing something really bad. We're talking, they're really doing something bad. A robber, a robber is coming to steal from me. 
So they, this can't be the will of Hashem. Hashem doesn't want these robbers to come to me. So therefore, you, you don't realize that Hashem is doing this. And there's and you feel, they're the ones who are disturbing me. Not because Hashem sent them. Sure, he said negative, so that's against, against Hashem's will. So how can he see any good from this? And the famous answer is, you need to know, that no person can do anything to you that's not been decreed in Shemayim. Even though that person will be punished for what he did, because what he's doing is a bad thing. Because the wicked person is not intending to fulfill God's mission. But that has nothing to do with the suffering the person was supposed to go through. The person would go through the suffering anyway. If somebody is stealing your money, you'd, you'd be losing the money. The only question is how you would lose it. That doesn't change. And look at that look, look at that, that talks more about this. So says the author, every time a person wants to pour his heart and his sufferings before Hashem, a person should increase his prayers and supplications, and to ask, give me faith. I have to believe, help me to believe that nobody in the world can do anything to me if you don't give them the ability to do what they want to do. And give me that. And I help me believe that everything that's happened to me is good for my eternal good. Even though I don't understand it at all. And therefore, if I believe that, then then I can open up my mouth with praise and thanksgivings to Hashem and my heart will not feel bad. My heart will not be crooked. To trust and have faith in you. You should, that's what you should have with Hashem. Hashem, you know, I'm beginning to feel that these guys are the sources. I know that's wrong. So help me, strengthen me to know that it is not these people. You know, the government gives you a call. And they, and they make problems for you. You got to realize it's not the government. It's what? It's a Kaddish Baruch Hu. And just to have a moon and a shem that everything's going to be fine. Hey, look, L'shon Azov shall say, here is the golden language of the Sefer Achinoch when he describes the reason for the mitzvah of Shalom L'nakeim, not to take revenge. Famous words. Mishrash mitzvah, the root of the mitzvah to not take a revenge is... That a person should take to heart that everything that happens to him from good and bad, it's, it's a reason that the person should come closer to Hashem. What, it all comes to that. Whatever happens to a person is to bring you closer to Hashem. And in someone else's hands, nothing will happen to you if it's not the will of Hashem. Okay, so if someone gives you pain or suffering, you have to know, you should know it's your sins that caused this to you. And Hashem has decreed it as such. And you should not have thoughts in your mind to take revenge. He's not the cause of the bad. It's your sins that are the cause. As Dovid Melech said, we'll elaborate on this shortly, when Shimi ben Gera was cursing Dovid Melech and his soldiers wanted to kill Shimi, he said, let him curse me. Because Hashem has told us. To me. Hashem told him to do it. Told my he what he 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 said the whole thing was because of my sins. Dovid Melech said, "Velobi Shimi ben Gera was not Shimi ben Gera." Bechem Matzinu Eitzel Yosef, inspired by Yosef and his brothers, 
Shachim Chash for the Machrol Aved Begam Lahamdul. The brothers thought to sell him as a slave and that he should be lost. But what does Yosef tell him at the end? He says, And now you should not be sad and not be bad and you're angry in your eyes. Don't feel upset that you sold me. Because it was to have us survive. Hashem sent me ahead. You were the tools for our survival. And he says it again at the end of Sefer Breshis. Hashem planned it all for the good. So that's another example. Now the morale gives us a deeper explanation on another interesting idea. The morale explains when Yosef, what did he do? He said, Yosef sent 10 donkeys laden with good stuff to, to, to his father after he was that they knew he was alive. So why 10 donkeys? So the morale says incredible. He says, what do we know about a chamor? Shmo moral of the name itself, that amalaje de chamor, shuhachomri, it's very gross and physical. Veneder hasechel has very little intellect. Yosem Mishal is the dumbest of most animals. Okay, so what happens? Ukeshishomim alav masa, when you put a load on it, enedem mi somalav is a masa, he doesn't even know who put the load on it. Veneder ma yesh, he doesn't even know what's in the load. Ulom alichas, so where are you taking it? And what's the purpose of going? He doesn't, he doesn't, he just goes. You put it on him and he goes. No questions, no nothing. A dumb, a dumb donkey. So what's the donkey symbolizing here? This is what Yosef is symbolizing to his father. Don't get angry at the 10 brothers who sold me down to Egypt. Because they're like the 10 donkeys that I just sent. Because everything they did, they didn't really know the goal of it all. Because Hashem was sending me to save everybody. That's why I'm in Egypt now, to keep everybody alive. This only because this all came from Hashem. Now, footnote Lamed is very interesting because there's a very big Chiddush that the Orachayim HaKodesh says. And the commentary is going to tell us, but generally we don't accept this Chiddush of the Orachayim. Bama Shekos Orachayim HaKodesh Parish, Parshas Vayeshev. The Orachayim says this big Chiddush in the beginning of Parshas Vayeshev. For Odom HaKodesh and other places, it's like this. It says, Shabala Bechira, a human being who has free will choice, can kill someone even if it was not decreed for them to be killed. And what's his proof? Well, because he says, when Ruvain said, why did he say throw Yosef in the pit? Why in the pit? Because he knew animals cannot kill a person that's not decreed. So that's why Ruvain was trying to save his life. Throw him in the pit. An animal will never kill a person if Hashem doesn't want. But in, implying, but if it goes into human hands, a human could go against God's will. That is the famous sheet of the Arachayim HaKodesh. He says it in many places, that they could do more than what Hashem wants. So he responds to that. Farni's bar, it's already been explained. Shibabadi needs a lot of she's Zanik Bidarum. First of all, it's always decreed by Hashem if somebody's going to hurt. Hashem decrees what's going to happen. Hashem's going to decree Hashem, a person is going to hurt. So where does the Bechira fit in? There is Bechira. The only Bechira is only which person will hurt him. That's the free will choice. In other words, the Jews had to suffer 400 years in a land that wasn't theirs. It was not decreed it had to be Egypt. Hashem decreed it, no question about it. Somebody's got to choose to want to do it. Came here and grow. That's all the explanation of the Lagon. There's a lot of ways to look at this. But you have to know, at the end of the day, what do we really hold? Nothing can happen unless Hashem wants that. You know, so that these these commentaries who say that people can do things even 
if it wasn't part of Hashem's plan, that can never be. That can never be. So it's just tell, wants you to, if you're aware of that opinion, but not, nobody, even a human being, cannot hurt you unless Hashem wants you. Now, he, Rabbi, the, Rabbi, yes, is sir. It, is it, it's kind of like what we said about Paro and any evil person. We were meant to get hurt, but they were the ones who opted to be the ones who That's were right. hurt. That's right. So, That's the free will choice. Right. So, so it may well be that um, if you get hurt by someone, um, it was you can still be. I mean, you were meant to get hurt, so you have to explore why Hashem wanted you to get hurt. But you can still say, well, why did you choose to hurt me? Well, that's that person's issue. But yeah. that, that, that's, he chose to want to be bad. And that's his own private cheshman with Hashem. Hashem will punish him for that. There's two but, separate tracks. I hear. So, like, do you have a responsibility to distance yourself from people who hurt you, even though you're meant to get hurt? Because well, you're supposed to make a normal. It depends on your level of amuna. If you have real amuna and you're really close to Hashem, no one's ever going to hurt you. If you're always double to Hashem, even if you know it's a person who's going to kill you, you know you don't have to worry about it. But most of us aren't on that level, so we make the ishtadlis to stay away from this. We do make ishtadlis to protect ourselves, but you don't have to worry. At the end of the day, whatever is meant to be is meant to be. And Hashem is going to make it happen. Don't think by running away from this person that means you've been saved. It could be, okay, this guy doesn't get you. But if Hashem wants you to be to be hurt, so another guy will get you. So I guess the real focus is to change yourself. Always that. If you find yourself in danger, there's a reason for it. So it should be doing tshuva. That will always take care of that uh, root cause. Uh, now, you never know if you do enough tshuva, but that's the main thing. As you're going to see in a minute, he's going to tell us this is exactly what David Melech does. Exactly. And that's well, going to yeah. be the next story here. Well, we I guess I guess with just one last point on that is, or I guess maybe the suffering is what you need as well. So maybe... Of course. Um, of course. Right? Is that of that? Of course. Exactly. We find this even more so with David going back to the story with Shimi ben Gera. When he was climbing up Harzesim to run away from Avshalom, Upagaba Shimi Ben Gari Rosh Hasanhedrin. Yafna Shimi Ben Gari was not a, a slouch. He was the head of the Sanhedrin. Vikilo Klolonim Retzas, and he gave him a real, real hard curse. Shaheim Chamisha Klolos, he gave him five curses, as the Morris Shabbos explains. And how does David respond? He says, Ki Hashem, Omar lo David. Hashem told him to curse me. Umi Omar, again. Who could say, you know, why, why you did this to me? The whole he continues, he says, Hanihalo, let him be Kalo, curse me. Kyomalo Hashem, Hashem said that. What is Hashem saying? Ulai, Yira Hashem, Be'inai. Okay, maybe Hashem will, uh, will, 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 Yira, I'll see Hashem with my eyes. Beheshim Hashem and Hashem responded, Li Tova Tachas Kolosa Yomase. That Hashem responded good for me instead of this curse. Well, let's try to unpack what this all means. Certainly, what Shimi did was not a good thing. The rabbi said, We have a rule. You embarrass somebody publicly, you have no portion of the world to come. Especially with Fratha Melchisro. So if you do that to a king of Israel, you can't be moichel on your honor. With his actions, he argued on the kingdom of David. Valdivri went against the Novi. Shmuel Novi anointed him as the king, as Hashem asked. How can you say Hashem said to curse? Words, what does David mean when he said Hashem told to curse me? Did Hashem talk to Shimi and say, go curse it? So, so, but, but there was a sin here. So what's going on? This is what David understood. If Shimi did not have permission from heaven to curse, if there'd be no purpose in him cursing me from heaven's perspective, 
Then Shimei could not curse him. That which Shimon Begera did was well, improper. And will get punished from Hashem. He deserves it. Ain't a clown in herself. That's not David's business. David says, My business is not to say how bad Shimon is. I can deal with that later. And he will deal with that later before he dies and Shlomo becomes the king. He says that Shimon has to be dealt with. But not because he wants to take revenge on him. But he knows this guy's giving me trouble. The only way this could happen is Hashem wants it to happen, and there's a goal and a purpose for it. That's all he's saying. Therefore, therefore, at that point, Hashem did shuba with his whole heart to Hashem, as the Zohar says. At that time, when Shimi was letting him have it, he did complete shuva. And his heart was broken inside it. Meaning, with a lot of brokenness. And he poured out many tears from his heart. Until he merited through that to be totally purified from sin. Who be safer shavit musur and in the safer shavit musur and it's interesting the Chavetz Chaim brings it down in Shmir Saloshim. Hey, be shavit medrash. He says for medrash, listen to this. Shaba osasha at that moment, nasa regal revealed the merkava. He became the fourth leg of the chariot. Avram Yitzchak Yaakov David. That's when he got to the highest place in the spiritual uh, growth in his entire life. Wow. So you see, David, the whole point was, I should be doing immense tshuva. Whatever tshuva I've been dealing till now hasn't been enough. For anything I've done wrong with Rasheva and this and that, although he did tshuva, he's being shown it's not enough. And that was his whole focus, is to do tshuva. So while everybody else would be thinking, oh, I got to get him back. Yeah, let's kill him. Let's do this. Let's. He's saying only one thing now. Hashem is obviously expecting a lot of greatness from me. And I must focus on the greatness that Hashem is looking for me. And that's when he achieved that greatness. We know that when the person cursing you out is a very simple thing. It would bother you. Let's say a stama, you know, uh, whatever, a uh, white trash kind of guy goes over you and he yells out, you're a dirty kite, whatever. It will bother you. But certainly, but it can't compare to this shame you have. If really important people do this, remember, Shimi was the head of the Sanhedrin. Because Kasha Oz Lima Odla Hasik Mamin, it'd be very hard to hold your place. And not to be broken. And these were the people who ran after him. These were important people. Avshalom made a rebellion. He was a very chashiv yid. He was a big, big person. Shimi was a big person. These were all big people. Not only that, and what did all these people do? They used the fact that they were able to overthrow David as proof positive that Hashem has rejected him. And he's no longer wanted by Hashem. That's how powerful their rejection was. As David Amal says a few times in Tehillim, he says, He says, as my enemies were crushing my bones and cursing me out, brother, as they said, a lie, call ayom, they said to me all the time, where is your God? And similarly, Elohim Osvo, they say, God has left you. Read food and soul. Let's run after the guy and let's catch him. Let's get rid of him. So you can imagine how hurtful this was. Okay. Umatsina, when we find Shiladavan and Melchay and his son God was that that was a really big test that Hashem threw his way. Kibizman tok at Tsarasa, me This is the time of his greatest suffering from within and from without. 
Remember, it's his son that he loved so much of Shalom from within. And Shimon ben Gera, uh, who, who uh, from the without, so from outside, is letting him have it. That if Shalom denigrated David in front of all the Jews and chased after him to kill him. Nafal bin Daitamot, he had a big uh, coming down, as it were. He was really feeling down. To such an extent, and this needs a lot of explanation, which we're not going to give now. But David Amel felt it's such a chil Hashem that's going on. People are saying, how could it be that David Amel I'm such a tzaddik? So Bikesh Lavod Avodazar, he's thinking of serving idol worship at this time, David Amelech. And he certainly was not in a position to dive into Hashem. That's what the bracket says. He didn't really want to worship idols. It's a whole discussion, but, uh, but the point is, he was certainly not in a position to pray to Hashem. That's what it is. I don't, you know, we, many of us have gone through very... Uh, Scary times, you know, but uh, but no one can say they came to a time as scary as David's. But they might, it's a revolution. Your son wants to kill you. They don't want to kill you. You're running for your life. It's not, ex- and you're being shamed and embarrassed. This is not the optimal time to pray to Hashem. But that's the whole point. That's what David Amalek teaches us. El Sikaso, but from the essence of his righteousness. Hey, Hashem, Hashem illuminated his eyes. So what did he do? He looked at the good that Hashem was doing in this tsar. And that's what it says. He sees that his plans are always going to happen. He sees that the Sanhedrin is, is backing him up. But Hashem had mercy on him. That he sent into this following thought. The fact that his own son is coming to kill him, that itself has a tremendous silver lining. Hashem helped David to be able to understand that there's good in this. And when you're looking at it, there's no way you could see good. It's all falling apart, completely falling apart. And he hangs in and he says, no, 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 no. It's not completely falling apart. I see Hashem is, is, is showing that, 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 that there's, there's reason for this. The Gemara says, Psalm 3, where it says a song to David when he ran from our shalom. So Gemara asks, Sarach Lomer Kila should have said a, a lament to David. What's the song? So what does Gemara answer? You're right, if the guy overthrowing me was a really terrible Russia, a totally unwarranted person, yeah, you're right, I'd be in bad shape. But it's my own son. Maybe he'll have mercy. Therefore, he said a song to David. And as we've said many times, because he saw that so crazy, the son that he was the nicest to, the one he cared the most for, the one he did the most for, to turn on him, he said, that's so unusual. It's only something that Hashem could have orchestrated. And once he knew that Hashem was orchestrating it, then there's nothing to be lamenting for. It's just a song. Now, F. Shalitos, you could make a mistake. That he was uh, engaged in a, in a mizmor that was filled with thanks and praise. But that's not really so. If you go through that third chapter, you find David screaming out, <laughs> pleading to Hashem. His mom is saying, Our life is terrible. So, how does the Gemara come off to say it was a song of praise? The opening word is praise, but all the other words aren't. So, he brings some of the Likute Halachas from Mervi Nossam that says, before Hashem, David praised Hashem, he couldn't doubt it because of the suffering. Because his heart was stopped. Whereas he was in a position he could not bring himself to pray. He was totally lost. But after he's able to understand this, the kindness of Hashem, and he started off, I'm going to sing out to Hashem. 
I, I, there's got to be good in it. And I've got to try to praise Hashem for that. And once he did that, take immediately his heart opened up and he could pray. Lishanin to supplicate. The Lizak Allah Shem to scream out to Shem with his prayers. Kadei Toda Bahoda Niftahale. When you thank Hashem, it opens the heart. And then we come this Balashem. Then you can dab a dish. And Mahal Sanim Shapam Rabba says to him, and this pathway, this way always happens off in the till. Many a till. It's Toda Bahoda, thanks Hashem, Rachas. Then you scream out. Fishuva Alda, and then again with praise. Then praise and supplication. And this is really why David is the shepherd for Malchus. What do I mean? Because what's Malchus all about? Malchus is, at the end of the day, everything we do, it has to be able to show that it's Hashem is doing it all. So where would you see Malchus in, in a greater place than when a person is suffering as much as he suffered and still brought Hashem out in it? Nobody in history suffered as much as David did. And nobody uh, uh, felt Hashem's presence as much as David. And that's what he's doing. So he himself knows I can't pray. But I know one thing. I can say praises to Hashem. And once you say praises to Hashem, then things can, and you mean it, then things can open up and you can pray. Let's just try to finish this up. The next page, but Emma said the truth is Let's say you don't really feel the good. I don't really see how I don't see anything good in this. I'll begin to start last week. You still have to try to find it. As Rabbi Nasan explains, this whole idea of Hanukkah. The whole idea of Hanukkah is Shakulo Toda It's all thanks and praise Hashem. Beautiful Pshadi says. The Nikra Hanukkah Milosha Chinuch. Hanukkah comes from Chinuch education. So, what does that mean? Kikamoha cotton Shemachan Chinus of Bishayno made in Masha was say, even a child, you train him, you train him to do things even though he doesn't know why, but he does it. Fiamma Mishalach Shemachaim is a mitzvah, and after he does mitzvahs, calls the master, and then he goes back to his foolishness. Take a little kid, seven years old, say, Come here, shake a little Vanessa. He shakes the little Vanessa, fine. Then when he goes, runs around like a kid again. That's how you educate a child. He's not on the level. It doesn't matter. Just educate him. That's what is every person. You got to be trained. To seek out all the good things that Hashem does for him. In other words, this is training. The whole idea of Hanukkah, we were trained to see the good in everything. When the Hashmonaim defeated the Greeks, it was a long time before the war was over. They got back the base of Mingus, but it was still a disaster. But then we're still going to praise HaKadosh Baruch So in other words, you have to have a chinuch in praising. In other words, you don't feel that. Right now, your mind, you have mochas to katnim, you have childish brains, because your mom is overwhelmed. Praise Hashem anyway. But I don't feel it. doesn't matter. Just do it. you got to be trained. Just say it. Now, hopefully you'll say it and believe it and feel it and it will strengthen your immunity. But even if you don't even believe it at all, it's so devastating. Just do it. you got to train yourself for that. Okay. We'll stop it at that. Hashem should help us to be able to uh, okay. have all these types of praises. Amen. Okay. Shkai, everybody. Hope you guys have a minion there in the shul. Take care. Rabbi, I have one question. Yeah. We are starting Malaki Male from today, correct? Yes, from already. Today. I already sent you one before, and I'll hopefully send another one later today. Rabbi, by any chance, I lost those uh, that email. Can you send I'll, me? I will send email? another one in a couple hours. I'll send an okay, updated okay. one, and you'll get it with everybody else. Okay. Okay. Well, thank is, you. Do you know if Romeo is making the Sheva Brachas tonight in the shul? I have no idea, Rabbi. Okay, fine. I will uh, speak to him. Do you have Romeo's number? Yes, sir. I'll email you. Email it to me, please. I'm sending it to you right now. Okay, thanks a lot. Okay, take care. Take care. You take care of it.